Hey Defenders, this is Doug Burks with Security Onion Solutions. I started Security Onion in 2008 to provide a free and open source platform to help you peel back the layers of your enterprise and make your adversaries cry. Today, Security Onion has been downloaded over 1 million times and is being used by security teams around the world for threat hunting, enterprise security monitoring, and log management. If you're a blue teamer, make sure you hit that like button and make it turn blue. In the last video, we saw how to use SO import PCAP in Security Onion 2.0 to import a PCAP preserving the original timestamps. In this video, we're going to take a look at Security Onion 2.1 Release Candidate 2 and its new import node that is specifically designed for SO import PCAP. Import node runs the minimal components necessary for SO import PCAP. So you can actually run this in a minimal virtual machine with only four gigabytes of RAM. So let's take a look at how you would do this step by step. I'm going to be using VMware Fusion, but regardless of what virtualization solution you use, the steps should be pretty similar. The first thing we need to do is create a virtual machine. Here in VMware Fusion, I've told it to create a new virtual machine. I click continue. I've already got the latest ISO image downloaded and verified and selected here, so I'll click continue. Now I need to tell VMware Fusion that the operating system is CentOS 7 64-bit because that's what our default ISO image is based on. Legacy BIOS is fine, so we click continue. Now we want to click customize settings. So we'll give this a name. and click Save. Now in my settings window, I can go into processors and memory. I'm going to increase the processors to two, and I'm going to increase the memory to 4096 or four gigabytes. Then I'm going to go to hard disk, and I'm going to increase that to 200 gigabytes and click Apply. So at this point, I should have four gigabytes of RAM, two CPU cores, one network interface, and a virtual hard drive with 200 gigabytes of storage. So now I should be ready to start my virtual machine. And at the boot prompt, I can simply press Enter. And here we simply type the word yes and press enter. We'll create a username, set a password and confirm that password. And now we simply wait for the installation to complete. Okay, our installation is now complete, so we press Enter to reboot. Now that I've rebooted, I'm going to log in with the username and password that I specified in the installer. And immediately upon logging in, we automatically go into Security Onion Setup. And you'll notice that at the bottom here, we have a new option called Import. And that's what we're going to choose for this video. So I use the arrow keys to go down to Import. I use the space bar to select it and then I press enter. We're prompted to set the host name. We'll keep the default of Security Onion and press enter. Now we need to select our management NIC. I only have one network interface, so I press the space bar to select it, and then I press enter to accept it. Now to configure that management interface, we're going to use a static IP address, which is already selected here, so I'll press enter. 
I'm going to go ahead and set my IP address and press enter. We'll accept the default bit mask and I'll put in my gateway and my DNS server and my search domain. I'll accept the default home net. I'll put in the email address that I want to use to log into the web interfaces. And then create a password and confirm that password. Now we're prompted to choose the access method for the web interface. So you can access it by IP address or host name. We'll just keep it simple and we'll use the default option of IP address. Do you want to run SO allow to allow access to the web tools? Yes, we do. And I'm going to put in the CIDR notation for my subnet. So something like that. And then finally, we're going to set this machine up as an import node. Please press yes to make changes. We press enter. Okay, now that our configuration is complete, we'll press enter to reboot. Now that our virtual machine is up and running, let's see if we can log into it. So to do that, we're going to create a new browser tab. And now we can log in using the email address and password that we specified in the installer. Okay, we're now logged in. The next thing we'll want to do is SSH into it. So from my terminal, I'm going to SSH to the IP address of my virtual machine. Now that I'm logged in, I'm now ready to run SO import PCAP, but I need a PCAP file to import. So to do that, let's go out to malwaretrafficanalysis.net, and there are lots of great PCAP samples here. We'll go with a very recent one. This is from August the 10th, and I'm simply going to right click and copy that address. Now I can go back to my SSH session and use wget to download that file. Now that comes down as a zip file, so the next thing we need to do is unzip it and put in the password, which is available at malwaretrafficanalysis.net. Now that we have the unzipped PCAP file, we can run SO import PCAP. SO import PCAP is now taking that PCAP file, it's running it through Suricata, it's running it through Zeek, and then it places that PCAP file where it can later find it if we need to pivot to full packet capture. And then once everything is done, we can then use this hyperlink that SO import PCAP provides. We can copy that, paste it into our browser, and that takes us to the hunt interface, and it runs this query. It searches for all logs related to this import ID, and it groups by event module and event.dataset. So then we see we have 732 logs that were generated from that PCAP file. Most of them came from Zeek, and you can see the different Zeek data types here. 
And we do also have some Suricata alerts as well. So I do want to show you some of the new features in this new version of Hunt. One of those is that these bar charts are now clickable, meaning that you can click on Zeek, and that's going to just show me event module Zeek. Another nice feature of this new version of Hunt is that it automatically updates the fields in this events table at the bottom based on the data type that you're looking at. So for example, if I were to filter to just DNS logs, you'll notice that this events table now shows me DNS query name, DNS query type, and DNS response code. And so that's some really great visibility to have when you were hunting through your logs to be able to see those kind of dynamically on the fly. Here's another example. If I look at all of my Zeek logs, and then drill into the HTTP logs, this bottom events table is now gonna show me things like the HTTP method, the HTTP virtual host, status code, status message, and a few other interesting fields specifically related to HTTP traffic. Now this leads us to another nice new feature of this new version of Hunt, and that's the fact that we now have three magnifying glasses for each of these values, whereas previously we only had two. So previously we had the plus, which would allow you to add that value to your existing search. We had the minus, which would exclude that value from your existing search. But we now also have this third magnifying glass, which starts a new search specifically for just that value. So for example, Let's say I'm looking at my HTTP traffic, I see an interesting site name, and so maybe I want to search for every instance of this particular destination IP address. I could click this, and that's going to update my search to just looking at destination IP and that IP address that I get. Not only my HTTP logs, but my con logs and any other type of logs where I might have found that destination IP address. So you can see that this new release of Security Onion 2.1 includes this new import node, which is the absolute quickest and easiest way. If you wanna experiment with Security Onion, if this is your first time trying Security Onion, all you have to do is spin up a virtual machine with four gigabytes of RAM, two CPU cores, one network interface, and you'll be up and running in just a few minutes. And you'll be able to try out our new hunt interface and of course be able to do cool things like pivot to full packet capture and see entire TCP streams. As always, we do wanna say thank you for tuning in to this YouTube video. If you are interested in things like training or professional services or Security Onion hardware appliances, please reach out to us at securityonionsolutions.com. We've got contact information there. And we'd love to talk with you and figure out how we can help you to peel back the layers of your enterprise and make your adversaries cry.